All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we left off in our last screencast from last Thursday at the cytoskeleton. And what I want to do is I want to skip the cytoskeleton in general. So we're not going to do this slide, this one, this one, or this one. So that's four slides we're going to be skipping. So where the heck are you going to start in your study guide? We're going to start at the cell membrane. And let me take you to your study guide here. Okay. Here's your study guide. You might not have this displayed, but you can display it. So if you show document outline on the left, this will show you different parts of the study guide, and you can just click straight to those parts. So we were at the cytoskeleton, and we're just going to skip over to the cell membrane. So click here, and this is where you'll start, at the cell membrane. You should have skipped all the cytoskeleton stuff. All right, so all this should be skipped up until the cell membrane. Okay? So let's get started with the cell membrane. <clears throat> First off, it's a membrane, so we know that it's made of the macromolecule lipid because it needs to characteristically not interact with water to protect the cell from being dissolved in water. We also call the cell membrane the plasma membrane because it's like almost like a um, almost like a jelly-like material. It's not exactly a liquid, it's not exactly a solid, uh, so therefore it's kind of like a plasma, like a jelly almost. The plasma membrane or cell membrane does also help to maintain cell shape. It separates one animal cell from another animal cell. All right, so if you think about your cells and mine, they look like this. Let me get a marker. So they look, here's one cell, okay, can you guys see that? That's kind of dark. Oh, here's one cell, okay, much better. And then right next to it, only separated by their cell membranes, is another cell, okay. So cells are right next to each other, just like that. And because of that, they need these cell membranes to separate one cell from the other. And ultimately, what the cell membrane does is it regulates the passage of materials into and out of the cell, ultimately helping to maintain that very important process that we know as homeostasis, which is a stable internal environment within a living thing. Now, I know membranes are made of lipids because they need to not interact with water, but the cell membrane actually has proteins embedded within it too that play a specific function within the membrane. And in our image here, our little cross-section of a piece of cell membrane that we see on the screen, these are our lipids, these uh, kind of circles with tails attached to them, and these big purple things are our proteins. All right, and it's always going to look this way. It might not be colored this way, but it's always going to look like this. Now let's talk about the structure of the cell membrane, kind of just like we talked about the structure of the cell in general. So here's that same cross-section of the cell membrane again. Part one. Part one here points to the actual cell membrane itself. And if you look closely at it right here, it looks like it's almost two layers deep. Like this is one layer, and then down here is another layer. Here's the head, here's the tail, here's the head, here's the tail is pointing inward. That is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is actually two layers, and often it gets the name lipid bilayer. So made of lipids, two layers, bi for two, lipid bilayer. So you can call the cell membrane, we can call it the cell membrane, we can call it the plasma membrane, we can call it the lipid bilayer. All these names are correct. Number two is a protein, just like I said on the last slide, this really big, big kind of oblong structure here that spans from one end of the membrane to the other, that's a protein. Number three identifies the same thing as number one, but shows us that we can also call it the lipid bilayer. Okay, this is the lipid bilayer, one layer here, one layer here. The animal cell, the eukaryotic animal cell membrane is a bilayer. 
Number four is carbohydrates. We have some carbohydrates attached to some of these big proteins within the membrane, and you don't really need to know so much about what those do, but just know that carbohydrates are there so that one cell can recognize another cell. Number five is a big one, and number five is kind of where we're gonna head with the rest of this middle section of this unit, and that's a transport protein. This is the kind of protein right here that's gonna let those very, very big macromolecules into the cell like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, all of those are gonna be able to get into the cell via these big proteins uh, present within the cell membrane. And ultimately, number six, I told you that membranes are made of lipids. Well, when it comes to the cell membrane, not any other membrane, just the cell membrane, the specific lipid that the, the cell, the eukaryotic animal cell membrane is made of is called a phospholipid, phospholipid. So each one of these little heads with the tail attached, head with the tail attached, head with the tail attached, that is a phospholipid. So the cell membrane ultimately regulates what enters and leaves the cell to help in an effort to maintain homeostasis, a stable internal environment for the basic unit of life that is the cell. It also provides protection and support. We know that the actual membrane itself is two layers of lipid, one layer here and one layer here. We call it the lipid bilayer. And it has proteins embedded in it. And it's not exactly a solid, but it's not exactly a liquid. It's kind of this like jelly-like plasma where it derives its other name, the plasma membrane from. Now, many of the proteins that are embedded within the lipid bilayer are channels or pumps. Think of them as like protein tunnels, if you will. These tunnels, these proteins, allow big molecules into and out of the cell that can't fit between the phospholipids, the actual lipids that make up the membrane. And lastly, again, like I told you, we don't really need to know much about carbohydrates, but you need to know that they do help in identification between one cell and another. These carbohydrates are present on the cell membrane as well. I hope you're understanding how important these macromolecules are. See you in the next one.